How do you compensate one for the loss of a loved one? No compensation can make up for the pain and suffering and the loss of my dear mother, my house, my family, everything, all gone. The first battle of Bull Run was fought on the land on which you now stand. Major parts of that fight raged over this hill called Henry Hill, so named after the family residing on its peak. The Henry family suffered dearly, but they were not the only family to live on this hill turned battlefield. Manassas was a battlefield, it was a home. As the violence crescendo, this land remained home to men and women, slave and free. One such man was James Robinson, on whose land you now stand. Robinson, a free person of African descent, struggled to make a life in the Manassas area. He was hired out as a common laborer, but never was taught a trade with which he could establish a profession. <laughs> Susan Gaston. Virginia law forbade Robinson from living with his wife. He was free, but his wife was enslaved. Because she was enslaved, all of their children were enslaved upon birth. They had eight. Gentleman Jim wanted what all families want, then and now, to be together. He hired his own son, Tasco, to come and work for him. He worked with others to ensure as many members of his family were hired by trustworthy locals as he could. Upon his death, one slave owner's will released James' wife and one daughter. Robinson was able to purchase and free two sons, Tasco and Bladen. As with many, the tragic system of enslavement made complete family units nearly impossible. Alfred and James, two other sons, were sold south. It was this home, bordering the heavily traveled Warrenton Turnpike, that soon found itself in the vortex of war. <laughs> Just before the battle, mother, I am thinking most of you. While upon the field we're watching with the enemy in view. Comrades brave around me lying of home and God, for well they know that on the morrow some will sleep beneath the sun. Farewell, mother, may you know. Positioned on Henry Hill, not far from the Stone Bridge, James Robinson soon discovered that the battle was to be waged on much of his own land. His house stood right in the middle of the battlefield. Confederate forces fell back from Matthews Hill with Union forces crossing the turnpike soon after, bringing them onto Robinson's land. 
Confederate Colonel Wade Hampton's men fought all around the Robinson House as they withdrew. As the battle opened, Pasco, Robinson's grown son, took the family to a neighboring house a short distance away, hoping to find shelter. Tasco recalled, Our house was like between the lines, and the shells were falling all around it. Not able to accompany the rest of his family, James Robinson hid under a bridge at Young's Branch on the Warrenton Turnpike. Would his house still be standing when the carnage was over? Did his family make it to safety? sounds of battle dissipated, Gentleman Jim emerged from his hiding place to survey the scene. The peaceful fields he had lived so long on were now littered with the dead and dying and remnants of war. Further up the hill, Henry House had been completely destroyed during the melee. Robinson's house remained standing, but what a sight it was. Thirteen Confederate soldiers lay dead in over 800 lay dead elsewhere, thousands more wounded or missing. Gentleman Jim and his family lived to tell the tale of the time their home became a battlefield. Little did they know that the next year, war would again rage on these same hills in August 1862, and again they would see the high price of war. What made you in favor of the Union Army, James Robinson? Well. There was a great deal of talk about the breaking up of our freedom, and I was a free man, and of course I couldn't be pleased with that idea. I scorned the view of it. You thought that if the rebels succeeded, you would be reduced to slavery again? Those were my feelings. Eighteen percent of the African Americans in Prince William County were free. Robinson was free, but made it his goal to free as many of his own family as he could. Among the African Americans in the county, Robinson was one of the wealthiest by far. Arsonists destroyed the Robinson House in 1993. The home may be gone, but the story will live forever, as long as we let it. His story is an American story. His family, an American family. To the question who should be compensated after the war, Albert Flagler replied, It's hard to run into anyone who hasn't suffered in one way or another. Lost crops, farms, cattle, animals, homes destroyed. Help should be given to the ones who lost everything. So many have lost so much. The Robinson family was one of many who lost so much, but emerged to continue to claim the American dream and to breathe the sweet air of freedom so soon to come.